Hi everyone, I'm Vicki Murphy. I'm a Jira line specialist with Xbium, which is a platinum solutions partner with Atlassian and is also now a proud Valiantis company. In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down the updates to Jira line with the release of version 10.123, which was released to Jira line instances on the continuous release track on August 4th, 2023. That will typically be your test or dev environment if you have one. And it will be released to all other instances, including production instances on August 18th, 2023. Let's go ahead and jump in. Before we jump into the tool, I do want to make an important um, update announcement for any admins of on-premise instances of Jira Align. If you currently are using an on-prem instance, uh, you will need to update all web and connector servers to use the Microsoft OLE DB driver for SQL Server version 18.6.5 prior to installing uh, the Jira Align version 10.123 that we'll be talking about in this video. All right, now let's go ahead and jump into Jira line and take a look at some of the updates in the tools. Starting out with our new favorite topic, the new user interface. Last release, we introduced the new navigation UI for a full walkthrough. Do check out the previous update video. We'll link it in the description of this video. This release, uh, we will see the rollout of the toggle for all end users across all instances on August 18th. So uh, with the last release, we uh, introduced an option to enable uh, a toggle right here uh, in the top right for end users to toggle between the legacy and new user interface. With this release, that setting will be forced on. All users will see this toggle and will be able to uh, flip between the uh, navigation interfaces for the next couple of months. In previous updates, Atlassian mentioned that they expect this toggle in the legacy UI to be available for three months after this release, at which time uh, they will be fully rolling out the new UI to all end users. Um, Atlassian does continue to make some small updates with this UI, so let's go ahead and walk through those. In the strategy tier, we now have a new option available in the left-hand panel. We now have this backlog option. We do see strategic backlog and backlog. Strategic backlog will be our strategic items like our mission, vision, values, high-level goals. The backlog is going to jump us to the uh, typical backlog module at the Epic tier for all programs. So this allows you to get a global rank across all of your programs. Um, you can use the in-page filters to further narrow down what data this module is showing you. Additionally, a report that used to be at the strategy level, the status report module, uh, is going to move to the portfolio and program tiers. It does show us things like epics and standalone features, so it's a bit more fitting for it to be at those uh, uh, portfolio and program tiers. Flipping tabs to the program level, um, at this level, we are going to see more reports listed under the reports menu. You'll also see this at the team level. All reports that were available in the legacy UI have now been moved to these proper sections. If you've been working with the new UI for the last few weeks and you weren't able to find some reports, I recommend uh, checking here under the reports menu for program and team level and see if they are there now. Switching to the OKR Hub, formerly known as the Objectives Tree, uh, to support multi-team OKRs in the new UI, the OKR Hub will now allow us to select multiple teams under the team filter. This in-page filter here now allows us to select multiple and press apply. In the world of OKRs, we also have another update. Um, you, when using the uh, new OKR UI, so this is uh, another UI update, but separate to the navigation UI. If you haven't seen this previously, you can reach out to your administrator. They can reach out to Atlassian to have this enabled. Um, whenever we are working with key results in this new UI, we are now able to edit the baseline number here. So I could update this to say 30. Um, when doing this, you will see this change across any relevant reports, as well as in the audit log of the key results, which is now here. All right, and one final change to look at in the tool before we switch back to the slides. The mass move mo module has received some small updates. You can access the mass move module under the grid, for example, uh, 
whenever we open this up, the functionality of this has not changed. Rather, just the labels that we see making it a little bit more clear what we are actually doing when we use this module. At the top, you'll notice that the uh, top section is now called Select Work Items. We can use these in-page filters to select uh, the filter of items we want to view, and then we're able to select one or multiple here. At the bottom, our section is now called Select Program Increment. You can choose the program increment and program you want to move these work items to. And the Save button now says Move Work Items. Again, just trying to make it a bit more clear what we're actually doing here. And back to the slides for some final updates. We do see some API updates with this release. Uh, the get, create, and update endpoints for uh, process steps is now available on epics and features. And when using the get endpoint for epics, you'll be able to return a list of all child features. Atlassian also announced the removal of 21 legacy reports with this release. Historically, Atlassian removes reports that have low usage to allow their team to focus on enhancements and bug fixes for those heavily used areas of the system. Over the last few releases, Atlassian has been removing the pages that make up the quality module. This continues in this release by cleaning up the code base and removing all references to and links to builds. And this will continue in the next release, version 10.124, where references to build streams, hotfixes, test environments, test folders, and test suites will be removed. This release did include several defect fixes. Some highlights include updates to dependencies that were displaying buttons even when permissions were disabled for users. Uh, future sprints displaying incorrectly in the program room uh, have been fixed. And some updates to the ability to add teams to the program board have also been updated. If you want any more information on any of these defect fixes or any of the updates we've included in this video, you can check out the release notes. We'll link them for you in the description of this video. And that's all for the release of version 10.123 to JiraLine. Thank you very much and good luck on your JiraLine journey.